as in previous lecture we have studied the drugs which are used for the treatment of amoebiasis and in that we discuss metronidazole in detail and in this lecture we will complete the drug treatment of amoebiasis and as we will see the classification again as I told you that antamoeba histolytica it enters through the oral route and it can infest the intestinal lumen then it can cross the mucosa and it can to lie into the submucosal tissue and there it can infect the submucosal tissues and lead to uh, amoebic colitis and dysentery or it can enter into the liver through portal circulation so we have got two types of groups which are effective against amoebiasis one group is luminal amoebicide as we discussed previously also these include three drugs one is diloxanide furate idoquinol and peromomycin today we will see the detail of luminal amoebicide diloxanide furoate idoquinol and peromomycin then we discussed metronidazole which is a tissue amoebicide for the treatment of colo um, amoebic colitis as well as amoebic uh, uh, liver abscess and after that we saw we have got another tissue amoebicide that is dehydroamethine or amethine these are rather toxic compounds and we use them only where metronidazole is not effective or metronidazole is not indicated and then chloroquine as we discussed this is an antimalarial drugs we are not going to discuss uh, discuss it over here as we have studied this drug in antimalarials so today we'll see what are different effects of amethine dehydroamethine and diloxanide furoate idoquinol and peromomycin and in the end we will see what are different regimes which can be used for various types of amoebiasis so first luminal amoebicide that is diloxanide furoate Diloxanide is a dichloroacetamide derivative. Furoate ester proved to be appreciably more active than the parent compound. So furoate ester proved to be appreciably more active as compared to the parent compound. Pharmacological action, these are directly amoebicidal and when they are tested in the vitro. And as I told you, furoate ester is more potent. What about the mechanism of action? Little is known about this. So mechanism of action of diloxanide furoate is unknown. Now we'll see what is pharma pharmacokinetic of diloxanide. After oral ingestion, the ester is largely hydrolyzed in the lumen or mucosa of the intestine to diloxanide and furic acid. So this ester is hydrolyzed in the lumen of the gut into diloxanide and furic acid. Only diloxanide appears in the systemic circulation. 10% remains in the lumen. So only 10% remains in the lumen. And out of this, all 60 to 90% is excreted in the urine within 48 hours. So diloxanide furate is converted into diloxanide and furic acid and only diloxanide appears in the systemic circulation only 10 percent remain in the lumen and all out of all the uh, all um, out of all the compounds 60 to 90 percent is excreted in the urine within 48 hours the mechanism of diloxanide furate is unknown what are the therapeutic indications or clinical uses as we know that diloxanide furoate is one of the luminal amoebicide and it is used for the treatment of asym asymptomatic patient these asymptomatic patients are persons of amoebic cyst and they are infecting other other people 
as well as they themselves can have systemic disease at any time. Diloxanize is ineffective when administered alone or in the treatment of extra intestinal MBSs. So always, whenever we have to treat systemic infection by MBSs, then we have to add some tissue nebicide. So diloxanide furate is used along with or after an appropriate systemic or mixed amoebicide to have an effective cure. So some people, they combine diloxanide furate with metronidazole. At the same time, both are given and it comes under the trade name of a combination under the trade name of entemizole DS or entemizole simple that comes in the market which have got metronidazole plus diloxanide furate that can be used for the treatment of amoebic colitis as well as amoebic liver abscess because combination of luminal and tissue amoebicide that is formulated. But some people they give metronidazole followed by luminal amoebicide. So what is the dosage? This dosage is required when you are asked about the prescription writing 500 mg 3 times daily for 10 days. So diloxanide furoate dosage is adult dose 500 mg 3 times daily for 10 days. Then if necessary the treatment can be extended up to 20 days. For children, the dosage is in per kg, that is 20 mg per kg per day in 3 divided doses for 10 days. So diloxanide puree, children dose 20 mg per kg per day in 3 divided doses and 500 mg 3 times daily for 10 days for adults. And remember that when you are asked about write a prescription against uh, amoebic colitis or amoebic dysentery then you will be required to write down the dosage how much per day and for how long now we see what are the adverse effects the adverse effect of diloxanide furate are very mild generally well tolerated very mild adverse effects are there and this include flatulence or sometime there can be nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, pruritus or urticaria but disappears occasionally. So diloxanide furate well tolerated having just mild adverse effect related to flatulence and occasionally there can be nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, pruritus and urticaria. Now we will discuss the second luminal amoebicide that is idoquinol or diidohydroxyquine. Di Idoquinol diidohydroxyquine is a halogenated hydroxyquinoline. It is an effective luminal amoebicide and it is used with metronidazole to treat amoebic infections as we discussed whenever there is systemic inflammation or infection with antamoeba histolytica we need tissue amoebicide plus a luminal amoebicide so idoquinol is a luminal amoebicide so always add it to metronidazole when we have to eradicate the infection as well as we have to treat the systemic systemic infections so now we'll see the pharmacokinetics 90% of the drug is retained in the intestine and excreted in the feces. So, idoquinol 90% remains in the intestine and excreted in the feces. Only 10% enters the circulation, which has got plasma half life of 11 to 14 hours. So, 90% of idoquinol remain in the lumen and it is get excreted from the feces while 10% that enters the circulation and has the plasma of life of 14 hours and this excreted as glucuronide in the urine and this remaining is excreted as glucuronide in the urine. 
The mechanism of action of idocrinol is again unknown. So idocrinol mechanism of action against rufocyte is unknown. It is effective against organism in the bowel lumen. So it is only a luminal herbicide. Uh, but no action against the trophocytes in the intestinal wall or extra intestinal tissue. So no effect on the intestinal wall as, the, as well as the extra in intestinal tissue. So idoquinol mechanism is unknown but it is having effects against luminal organism and which are present in the bowel lumen. Precautions idoquinol should be taken with meals to limit the gastrointestinal adverse effects and it should be used with caution in patients with, this is very important, with optic neuropathy, with renal disease or with thyroid disease or non-amoebic hepatic disease. If the hepatic function they are disturbed because of some other disease then the drug should be used very carefully. Then thyroid disease, because it has got iodine content, then it can disturb the thyroid function. Then in renal disease, it can accumulate if renal functions are not proper. Then in case of optic neuropathy, you have to be careful while using idoquinone. Then what are the contraindications? The drug should be discontinued if it produces persistent diarrhea I, with idoquinol. If there is persistent diarrhea, you need to discontinue the drug or if there is appearance of iodine toxicity. So if there are signs and symptoms of iodine toxicity as it contain iodine content, so dermatitis is there, urticaria is there, pruritus or fever and other adverse effect of iodine toxicity, if they are seen, then you need to stop idoquinol or if there is persistent diarrhea again you will you have to stop idoquinol so idoquinol is contraindicated in patients who are intolerant to iodine now we come to the third drug we will discuss the third drug that is peromomycin Peromomycin is an aminoglycoside antibiotic. You have studied aminoglycosides which are protein synthesis inhibitors and these drugs they are used, they are given parenterally, they are not absorbed from the GIT. So peromomycin when it is used orally there is no significant absorption from the GIT. It remains in the lumen and act as a luminal amoebicide. So used only as a luminal amoebicide and has no effect against extra intestinal amoebic infection. So peromomycin when used orally remain in the lumen and show luminal amoebicidal activity. The small amount of absorb is slowly excreted unchained mainly through glomerular filtration. As you must remember that aminoglycoside they are excreted through glomerular filtration and they affect the kidneys also. So kidney function must be normal when we use peromomycin. The drug may accumulate with renal insufficiency and contribute to renal toxicity. So you have to be careful that renal function they should be normal otherwise there will be accumulation of peromomycin and this can lead to renal toxicity. Peromomycin is effective luminal amoebicide, similar efficacy and probably less toxicity than other agents like diloxanide furoate and idoquinol. In a recent study, it was, it was proved to be superior to diloxanide furoate in clearing asymptomatic infections from the lumen. Parental peromomycin are under investigation for the treatment of visceral leishmaniasis. So peromomycin, they are luminal amoebicide and they can be used in combination with metronidazole when you have to eradicate amoebiasis from the systemic infections. And it is being investigated for the treatment of visceral leishmaniasis also and somewhere it has proved to be superior as compared to diloxanide furate. 
What can be the adverse effects of peromomycin? Occasionally, abdominal distress and diarrhea can be seen. Peromomycin should be avoided in patients with significant renal disease. As I told you, it, it, it is filtered through the glomerular filtration, so kidney function should be normal. Otherwise, accumulation of the drug can lead to adverse effects, and these adverse effects can uh, just add up to the renal problem. Use with caution in person with gastrointestinal ulceration because from the ulcerated area it can get more absorption to the systemic circulation. So we have to be careful in using the drug where there is gastrointestinal ulceration or where there is significant renal disease or the occasional adverse effects they are just abdominal distress and diarrhea. So you have to be careful when the renal function they are compromised or whenever there is gastrointestinal ulceration while using peromycin. Now we come to the second group of tissue mepicide. As I told you, these tissue mepicide, these are emetine and dehydroemetine. These are rather having many, many adverse effects and toxic effects and we use emetine or dehydroemetine only in supervised conditions in admitted patients and we use it only just for three to five days because these are very toxic. So what is, what is the chemistry? Emetine is an alkali derived from epicac or a crude drug that is brazil root. So epicac, it is derived from epicac or brazil root direct acting systemic amoebicide it is having direct action and it kills the amoeba in the tissues or in the system dehydroemetine is having similar pharmacological activity but it is considered less toxic so whenever we require to use these drugs we will prefer dehydroemetine because of its less toxicity now we will see the pharmacokinetics drugs, they are administered parenterally because oral absorp absorption is erratic. Oral preparation show erratic absorption. So the drug is used parenterally but these drugs they are given subcutaneously that is preferred or intramuscularly but never intravenously and it, these are given in a supervised set, se uh, settings. So drug is given carefully, subcutaneously or intramuscularly but never intravenously. They accumulate in the tissues and are eliminated slowly by the kidneys. So emetine and dehydroemetine accumulate in the tissues and are eliminated slowly by the kidneys. What are the therapeutic indications? So as we have discussed, wherever metronidazole is contraindicated or metronidazole is showing no effect, we can use emetine or dehydroemetine for severe amoebiasis. So limited to unusual circumstances in which severe amoebiasis warrants effective therapy and metronidazole cannot be used. Only th this is the indication. Dehydroemetine is preferred as I told you previously that over the emetine because of its somewhat better toxicity profile. So dehydroemetine showing less adverse effect as compared to emetine. So we will prefer dehydroemetine. What can be the adverse effects when we use emetine or dehydroemetine? generally mild when the drug is used just for three to five days but they increase as we prolong the therapy so these effects generally are mild when we use the drug for three to five days and if we use emetine or dehydroemetine for long period the adverse effects they will increase there can be pain and tenderness in the area of injection and then there can be formation of sterile abscesses at the area of injection. So subcutaneous or intramuscular injections are used and there can be appearance of pain and tenderness and sometimes sterile abscesses at the injection area. Common adverse effect is diarrhea. Then minor adverse effect include 
nausea, vomiting, muscle weakness and discomfort and min minor ECG changes. So common adverse effect is diarrhea while nausea, vomiting, muscle weakness and minor ECG changes they can be included and they are considered mild adverse effects. Serious toxicity can arise with emetine and dehydroemetine and we limit it by decreasing the days of its use that is three to five days and what can appear there can be appearance of cardiac arrhythmias there can be heart failure there can be hypertension so all are related to heart cardiac arrhythmias heart failure and hypertension can appear which can be toxic and which can be even very serious or even fatal so what are the precautions in the use of emetine and dehydroemetine? Although both drugs have been widely used to treat severe invasive intestinal MEBSs and extra intestinal MEBSs, but largely they have been replaced by tissue amoebicide that is metronidazole and metronidazole is uh, uh, treating all these serious invasive amoeba, amoeba conditions very effectively. And this metronidazole is effective as well as far safer. But emetine and dehydroemetine should not be used unless metronidazole is ineffective or in some cases where metronidazole is contraindicated. So in cases of ineffectiveness of metronidazole or contraindications of metronidazole, we need to use emetine or dehydroemetine in the places of invasive intestinal MEBSs and extra intestinal MEBSs. So what are the precautions that a drug should not be used in patient of cardiac or renal disease? These are the contraindications as it leads to cardiac adverse effects so as well as accumulation because of renal disease can occur. So cardiac and renal disease are the contraindication. Then in young children the drug should not be used in pregnancy, emetine, dehydroemetine should not be used and we can use it only in those cases wherever absolutely necessary that we cannot use metronidazole or we have got uh, no effect with metronidazole or there is failure to eradicate the amoebic uh, infection with metronidazole. There you will add emetine or dehydroemetines. So we will see the summary. Uh, this is showing how the cysts they infect our intestine and cysts they hatch in the colon and lead to trophocyte or active form which trophocyte release and enter into the submucosal tissue and here they multiply and lead to colitis or uh, amoebic uh, dysentery and after the, uh, from here it can enter to portal circulation going to liver and infecting the liver and other systems. So we will require two types of drugs. One is luminal amoebicide. Luminal amoebicide are those drugs which will show the action only in the lumen and clear the lumen from cystic as well as trophocyte form of the amoeba and these are perovomycin, idoquinol and diloxanide furoate first one diloxanide furoate perovomycin and idoquinol then for the for eradication from the system or from the tissues we have got tissue amoebicide and these are metronidazole and dinidazole some books write it as mixed amoebicide but we consider it as tissue amoebicide because it cannot completely eradicate the infection from the lumen. Then wherever there is systemic infection, systemic amoebiasis, amoebic dysentery is there, amoebic liver abscess is there or other system that is involved, metronidazole is used combined with the luminal amoebicide just to clear it all or just to wash it out of the intestine. Then for the treatment of liver abscess, we will require chloroquine just for the hepatic conditions. We will require chloroquine. Then in case of 
contraindications of metronidazole or ineffectiveness of metronidazole, you will require emetine or dehydroemetine as systemic mebicide or tissue mebicide. Now we will see what are different therapies and Number one, clinical setting is asymptomatic intestinal infection where patient is making other people infected. Patient is passing the cyst, having no symptoms of his own. And here we will require only one of the luminal agent. And this luminal agent, as we discussed, this is the, these are diloxonide furoid, idoquinol, and peromomycin. Does the dosage are 500 milligram TID or three times a day for 10 days for diloxanide. Idoquinol 650 milligram three times a day for 21 days or peromomycin 10 milligram per kg three times a day for seven days. These are for asymptomatic intestinal infection. Only one of these has to be used. Then mild to moderate intestinal infection, maybe colitis, metronidazole or denidazole, any one of these will be used as tissue mebicide and one, one of these luminal mebicide can be added which we have studied in the second, uh, last slide, in the first one, any one of these luminal mebicide can be used. So you can see tenidazole is the dose is 2 gram daily for just 3 days because tenidazole is having long action. It shows long duration of action. It is given 2 grams daily for just 3 days. And metronidazole dosage 800 milligram 3 times a day for 10 days. Any one of the luminal amoebicide or other antibacterial like tetracyclines and erythromycin that can be added as I told you that these are having action against the normal flora. So the normal flora are the food for amoeba and when tetracycline and erythromycin that is given the normal flora or the food for antimoeba histolytica that is decreased. So, they are helpful and they are second line drug tetracyclines and erythromycin is added. Then for severe intestinal infection, the same dose 800 milligram three times a day for 10 days metronidazole or tenidazole plus a luminal agent that is given. The same dose, same components and same dose for mild moderate and severe intestinal infection but in case there is less effect or if there is no response to metronidazole or metronidazole is contraindicated then we can use dehydroamethine or emethine in the dosage of 1 milligram per kg subcutaneously or intramuscularly for just 3 to 5 days and all this is done under supervision it on admitted patients. Then we will see how to treat hepatic abscess or amoeboma or other extra intestinal disease when there is formation of abscess or there is formation of a mass containing antimoeba histolytica which is called amoeboma and other extra intestinal diseases. Again, you will use metronidazole 800 milligram TID for 10 days, tenidazole 2 gram for 5 days, and any one of the luminal agent, three, any one of three, that is peromomycin or uh, diloxanide furate or hydroquinol can be added. The second line choices will be dehydroamethine or emethine. And we can use chloroquine only in case of liver abscess. Chloroquine is added with all this regimen just in those cases where the infection is in the liver. That is 500 milligram BID or two times a day for 21 days plus aluminum amoebicide. So I hope 
you understood the treatment of amoebiasis and in next lecture we will complete the treatment against other protozoa. Thank you very much.